Hello and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here on Vanilla FM. We're now um, past January and I've made a couple of changes to the squad. But let's just take a, a little bit of a overview of what's going on so far. So we're currently in 12th middle of the table with one match behind. Um, and yeah, it's not going as well as we have hoped. But... As long as we finish in the top half, the board is happy. So that's what we're doing at the moment. That's the aim. Uh, if we look at the schedule, I think we, the last time um, I recorded a video was around about here, I think, November. Uh, since then, we went on to lose the, the FA Trophy. And then we've had very mediocre um, results. And it's been a mixed bag recently, really. So in a f we're in, in the final stretch now of the of the league. So we just need to make make the most of it going forward. I made a couple of changes in the January review of the squad that I usually do. And in in that, uh, I got two new strikers and one new centre back. Um, so let me show you the changes now. They're not brilliant changes, but they just helped a little bit. So we've got just a new backup centre back just to kind of be on hand because the one the back the guy that we had on backup was all right, but just, we just needed some change. It was non-contract player for non-contract player, so it was an easy change to make. So yeah, we've got Matthew Kilgallen to be our new backup centre back. And the other changes were the two strikers. So uh, Ross used to be our main striker. He, he actually worked, um, plays quite well in the attacking midfielder position. So we're going to put him... We got rid of um, Michael, who was our um, second attacking midfielder previously. We released him and we got Ross instead to play in that position. And our new stri new strikers aren't as good as Ross, but they all do for now. So we've got Chris um, Holroyd, who's you know getting on a bit, and even older than Ross, we've got Jason Walker um, to be in that position as well. They're just poachers, so they don't need to run around too much. Uh, so they'll be fine. So those are all the changes that we made. Um, and yeah, so we just need to stabilize the squad. The dynamics have improved massively. So now, I mean, they went over into the green um, just before I made those those two those three changes. But now they kind of in just on average. Obviously, we need to pick up a few more wins for them cohesion to improve as well, because that you know good results help helps with that as well. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I've been making sm small improvements to the staff as we went, went along. I've just finished it, um, setting some assignments up in the um, scouting section here with um, one scout and the recruitment al analyst that I got in recently. Um, yeah, even the end of 23s, I've been looking at staff and everything trying to improve things incrementally making a bunch of requests to the board just to get things improving going along we are going to get our youth facilities improved uh, in the next month or so so that's great we're gonna play one more match just now um i always accept the recommendations of the um of the staff but I am going to change most of these players because we just play the friendly in the meantime because we had a week off because our stadium was waterlogged so I decided to play friendly so I played all of our backup players just for that one so I'm going to bring in the main squad for the league match with the exception of a couple of players who've been complaining they haven't had enough time so I'm gonna, I might give a few more minutes to some of the backup players as well um, I think he's one of them. I will have to double check, but I think he's one of them, and he's also one of them. Oops, let me do that. Uh, Jamie Doyle, 
14 goals for us this season. So pretty good going. The bench is looking a little bit bleak, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so we're gonna put Ross on the bench. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Ross, there we go. Um, yeah, we don't quite have enough spaces on the bench for everything we want. Look, let me just double check on those players that we're promising stuff to. Yeah, Carl and Ash. Okay. Great. And we're gonna go to the match. We're playing at home. I think last time we played against these guys, we did quite well, so we'll see how we do now. And yeah, so I'm obviously, as I've been saying in previous episodes, I haven't had actually much time to play around with the game because I, I missed a whole week of the beta. And I actually only played a few minutes of the beta, to be fair. Um, yeah, so I haven't had a huge amount of time, but I know there's a couple of features that annoy me a little bit. One of them, which I mentioned already uh, on social media, is that the transfer value doesn't quite seem to work. Because um, you kind of want to know the, the rough value of the player. Um, which isn't necessarily the value that you offer him out. So I almost wish that he wouldn't replace the transfer value with the asking value of the player. So I hope they fix that in future versions of the game, because at the moment that, that mechanic isn't really working for me. Yeah, it's been quite an annoying, of an annoyance, really. Um, so that, but that's it. I think that's the biggest annoyance this year for me um other than that the game hasn't actually changed a whole lot there's no specific feature that i'm super excited about i don't know about you guys but yeah this year hasn't had any wow sort of features obviously the match engine is a lot better um which is great and i guess that's a feature in itself uh the improvements of the animations and stuff just variation as well. There's lots more variation, like plays that you wouldn't see in other versions of the game, and, and now you definitely do see them quite often. So, so that's good. Now, in other channel news, I've I think I've finished rebranding everything for this year. It's just taken me a while. I've also added a new mug to the Patreon. So, the if you now um, if you go for the VIP Patreon level. After three months, you get the channel mug, which is now being rebranded for this year. Uh, so it just includes, you know, the background, colors, and the name of the channel, as well as, you know, a couple of logos, including the Hereford logo, because we always do the Hereford safe. So that's what the mug looks like. If you want to check it out, go to Patreon. Um, what else can I plug in here? Yeah, also the background music that you're listening to uh, i've made those tracks one saturday afternoon when i was bored and um you feel free to go and add them to your studying list or gaming list or whatever uh whatever playlist you use um yeah you can find them the the, the link is is in the description you can find them on any streaming platform pretty much globally anywhere so if you want to add them to your lists, that would, I'd really appreciate that because obviously that generates a little bit of extra income for me as well. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that if you want to help out the channel. Lots of ways to help out Patreon, get your name on the credits or get the channel mug. Uh, there's the music and also obviously free shares as well um, if you're interested in um, using the free shares app, you can get f a free share if you use the link that I set out in the description. Right, we're going to do the final subs here. Um, I don't have any attacking players, so I'm going to go with Hotchkiss. And I might just get Paul Keegan in. 
yeah, so lots of ways to help out. If you have any ideas of, you know, anything else that I could be offering, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, also let me know how, how you're finding the game, what kind of saves you've been trying, and any features that you've been enjoying or not enjoying. So the aim of this series uh, is just to manage Hereford for as long as possible. In fact, for the entirety of it. Not just for as long as possible, for the entirety of it. If I get fired, I'll just make a new manager man and start again. Or not start again, start where their manager gets fired. I've never been fired um, as a Hereford manager, so hopefully that won't happen. We'll <laughs> hopefully I haven't started anything. But yeah. Um, uh, and what we did last year, we took our time and eventually made our way up to the Premiership. Slowly. Over several seasons. Many, many seasons. So yeah, we're probably not going to get promoted this season. But as time goes on, uh, we'll make Hereford better, little bit by little bit. And hopefully we'll get promoted eventually. So we've got a win here. I'm going to praise Bailey for another great performance on defense. So yeah, so as a team, overall, if we look at the data and stuff, um, we, we, we can see that we have great passing, we have great shooting, our defense is our is the worst bit, even though like we have, we seem to have the better players in the fence, but is actually the bit that's letting us down because when we compare ourselves with, say, let's go to the competitions. When we compare ourselves with other teams, we've got 39 goals scored um, possession, we, we're, you know, leading in possession, pass completion, we're leading in pass completion. Bearing in mind we're only at the middle of the, of the table. But we're nowhere to be seen in terms of defensive stuff. We probably... If we go to stages... Goals against, where is that? Okay, so we got net zero. So we scored 39 goals this season, we also let in 39 goals this season. So so that's really what is letting us down, is the amount of goals we get, we're letting through. If we can fix that, um, then I think we're on, on a way to... You know improving things dramatically i think the worst thing for us is tackling we're just not making enough tackles so i might have to look at some tactical tactical changes for that maybe we're not tackling enough like we're not we're staying on our feet too much maybe i don't know let's have a look at that training course mm, don't need to do that okay Alright, let's look at the tactic, just to see what we're doing. There we go. So we're playing, playing with a very defensive defense, so the defenders aren't helping attack at all. They're just focusing on defense. And then we've got a fairly attacking midfield and, um, and attacking positions. So we've got a poacher with a wide target man, so the two of them in tandem should be scoring a lot of goals. In fact, our wide target man, Doyle, he has the most goals scored this season, 14 goals, 12 of them for the league. That's very good. Got these two supporting roles here, just feeding balls through to these two guys. Um, the centre midfielder also has been scoring quite a lot of goals because, you know, they're basically just running in from the middle of the field and appearing late on, on the area, which is nice. And then we've got the supporting girl, uh, role of the defensive midfielder just to kind of make that bridge between the two, which is good. I'm happy with that. Um, at the moment, we're playing with, and this obviously changes a little bit from match to match, but at the moment, we're playing with a narrow stance, 
feeding the ball through the middle, mainly, being quite cautious. So that this is our good passing that we've been having. We're working the ball into the cross, into the box with mixed crosses. So again, that's our attacking mentality, which has been working really well. Shorter passes, which has been helping a passing rate. And a lower tempo. I usually play with a higher tempo, but our physicality isn't there. So that's actually helping us. Uh, so we counter pressing. So we're always counter pressing. Okay, so maybe we're getting run here. Who knows? Okay, we haven't instructed our defenders to either to stay on their feet or get stuck in. So, at this point, I would say I would say maybe get try getting stuck in. We're gonna try getting stuck in just to see what that does. Making one change at a time. Um, I mean, our coaches might advise us against that, but we'll, we'll see. I don't think we're that bad. If you look at the squad comparison defense, uh, our tackling isn't that bad. Got good positioning and good marking. The only reason I'm telling them not to mark too tightly is because they're not fast. So if they mark too tightly, they're going to get run. Um, so let's not mark too tightly. But they position themselves well and they've got good marking ability. They've also got a decent tackling ability, so if we just get stuck in more, we might be able to then cut some of those crosses. Um, I'm not sure. Eventually, if that doesn't fix it entirely, I might then look at regrouping or holding shape rather than counter pressing, because that mean that might be why we're getting run. Okay, so we moved up to 11th. And we're going to play one more match before we finish this episode. We're going to play against Chester, who are just below us in the table. It's just a shame that we got kicked out of the cup um, competitions because they, you know, they generate a little bit of income for us. So, talking about generating income, it might be time for me to nag the board a bit more. I don't need a technical director. I definitely don't, don't need a loan manager because I'm not intending on loaning players out. But technical director, maybe. Who knows? That might be money wasting. But it's got rejected anyway. So, okay. A technical director really just looks after the staff and sends them out on coaching courses. So it might not be the best use of our money anyway. Okay, so we are praising and chastising players depending on how they do in training, just to kind of keep that morale directed. Oh, McDonald loan ends. That is potentially a problem. Okay, I need to fix this problem now. McDonald is our main right fallback. Uh, we got Jared, but we don't have another. Is there any way that we can extend that loan? Mm. Don't think there is. As far as I know, I'm not sure. So when does it is contracted? Okay. It's because it comes from Scotland, isn't it? Right, so I might have to get an extra back uh, 
as an emergency. Okay, they're telling us to lower our defense. Uh, they're saying don't do, don't go stick in. I'm gonna go stick in, just to see. This is it's an experiment. Right, let's just double check the main squad. So Hale Brown on goal. We'll definitely want to keep Donald. And uh, both of these defenders are doing a brilliant job for us. So let's keep him. Louis, uh, Louis de la Souza. Um. Okay. Need to keep these two anyway. Doyle will definitely gonna keep in. And Jason. Okay, that all looks good. It all looks good to me. It's just a shame with the only five subs, I can only really fit in an attacking player. Only because it's cri more critical to have defensive defensive players in the bench. Just because if you get like someone injured, it's much more critical to get them replaced in the fence than in attack. Because obviously you don't want them to leave a massive, you know, gaping hole in your defense. So. That's why I always prioritize defense players. But usually in previous saves, what I've been able to do is get defensive players that can play in a couple of different positions. So um, full backs that can play either left or right, center backs that can play on the wing as well, if necessary, or the defensive midfielders that can also play center back position, etc. But this this um, season, I wasn't able to you know, achieve that. So that's why there are more defensive players than usual. Okay, so we've got some construction of play here. Passing the ball around. Going back to the defenders every now and then. Casual is in the ball there. And Kaja's only playing because he's been complaining that he's not been playing enough. Usually, I would use um, Kieran Dahl. And Kieran Dahl is probably our best assisting player. Especially assisting to Doyle. So crossing over the box to the far side, over to Doyle on the other side. But because Kaja has been complaining that he's not had enough play time, I... Give him, giving him a chance to, you know, impress. So far, not impressing. And you can like clearly see the drop in performance from Doyle by not having Dalin. I might have to get him out actually, but this guy's got a red, uh, yellow card, so I'm gonna do that instead. So that's uh, that's it. This are uh, there's all the changes I can do in attack. Because I've changed uh, attacking midfielder. I can't do any more changes in attack now, so all the changes will have to be in the defensive roles. Go, here we go. The will has a chance. He's better with the head, to be honest. He's not much of a foot player, he's a more of a heading scorer. Got lucky there. All right, so last few changes, and I'm gonna get all the yellow card people out. There we go. And also, the other thing I've been noticing with FM this year is that. Um, Fatigue does affect players quite a bit, so there's been quite a few matches where we were doing really well in the first half of the game, and then because we got tired, even though I tried to manage players' fatigue and stuff, um, we caved in the second half. And that's happened quite regularly, actually, so I'm not really sure. I think just by having, at the moment, we have quite an old squad. I think in future seasons, um, the more we invest in younger players, the better that will be for us in, in maintaining those 90 minutes. Okay, 
Here we go, Doyle. Again, like I said, he's not very good with his feet. He'd be better off getting across from someone, but... Nobody went to that pool. But our defense is doing really well. I think. I think maybe that change to get stuck in was worth the while. And at least we managed to get a draw rather than a lost, which is fantastic. And I'm going to leave it there um, for this episode. Think, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. That really helps out. And check out all the links in the description as well for the various things. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.